<laughs> okay, I can always, never mind. Hey, it's Allie from Little Hill Homestead. Today, we're gonna bring you guys a recipe for bread machine English muffins. You can do this in a bowl as well. So a lot of homesteads on the <laughs> isn't standing here watching me. It's so awkward, like I could post this on YouTube and have thousands of people see it, but the minute my husband's staring at me, it freaks me out. Do I still make you nervous? <laughs> of course <Wow>. you do. <laughs> uh, anyways. English muffins? English muffins. All right. So in the months of January and February, a lot of homesteads, I'm not this short, by the way, I'm <laughs> leaning way down. Um, a lot of homesteads do pantry challenge. I'll include you. Okay. <laughs> a lot of uh, homesteads on YouTube do a pantry challenge for the month of January and February. And what that means is you're just cleaning out your pantry, your freezer, your refrigerator, and using what you have, trying to like get ready for a new canning season and stuff. And save some money. And save some money. But we decided not to do that um, starting January 1st. We just run into it. Other years we have done it. We made it six weeks last year, and we got super creative <laughs> at the yeah. end of it all. This year we're kind of doing like a mini version, but um, we had in our pantry, it, it's been there probably, let's see. This expired in October, but it's been in our freezer. It's just a tube of breakfast sausage. And we decided it was just taking up space. And so we decided we're gonna make breakfast sandwiches tonight. So in our house, we call breakfast Brenner when we have it for dinner, breakfast for dinner, Brenner. So yeah. that's what we're doing. But um, I'm doing it in the bread machine because I'm lazy. Okay. Actually, I'm not lazy. We have other plans of things we're going to go work on. I'll have to pay attention because I actually have never used the bread machine before. So this will be new to me too. It's like the, the easiest thing in the whole world. <laughs> well, Anyways. Great. You make me feel bad. Jeez. Well, can you push buttons? Because you can push yeah, mine. Yeah, I can push mine. <laughs> oh okay, he's off. You go. <laughs> I'm <laughs> just kidding. You can join us. I don't care. I'm going back. We have one cup of, this is our buttermilk. You can use milk as well. I warmed it up a little bit and I put three tablespoons of butter in it. So it's all melted together. And in our bread machine, because I forgot to start filming, there's one egg just chilling down there. It's room temperature. So I have one egg, one cup of buttermilk or milk, and three tablespoons of melted butter. We're just going to pop that into the bottom of our bread machine. The next thing you need is a half a teaspoon of just table salt, then a tablespoon of sugar. You can use a little bit less than that. Um, if you're worried about sugar, you can also use like honey or maple syrup or you know whatever you guys want. And then um, I'm using bread flour. It's three and one third cups of bread flour. I learned a trick recently, and I won't buy bread flour after we run out again because I was having a hard time finding it. And also with fresh milled um, flour, it doesn't quite have the gluten that commercial flours do. So I bought this for that reason, but I've also figured out that you can make your own bread flour with it. So what it is, I get it from Azure, of course, is vital wheat gluten. It's gluten. That's basically what it is. So if you don't want to use bread flour, you can use all purpose and some of this. You can get it on Amazon and stuff, but I found Azure's the um, best price. I use it now in sourdoughs as well. It really helps them rise a little bit better. Anyways, but I have bread flour today. You can use all purpose. You're just not going to qu quite get as much of a rise or chew. The chew will be different on them. But if you toast them up and stuff, yeah, whatever. Three. Was that three? I hope that was three. I'll know if it's not in one third. Last thing we need is two teaspoons of yeast. Okay, and then you're just gonna set your uh, bread machine to the dough cycle and that'll just let it run its course. So in mine, I have a Breadman Plus from the 1990s. I got it for like two bucks. It's number seven. And then you just push start and it does this thing. Now I do want like a Zerushi or like a really good two paddle bread machine um, to do because I use this thing to death. But I'm going to wait until this one literally dies before I go invest money in. But really, I'll probably go to a thrift store and buy another one. That's just what I do. But anyways, um, I'm going to let this mix. It takes about an hour and a half. I can cut it short just a little bit if I want to. But um, yeah. <laughs> it's one of those days, you guys. Have you ever had one? Okay. I'm going to give you guys my little rant for the day. 
So there is this makeup company that's like heavily advertising on Instagram and Facebook. And I mean, I feel like it's everywhere. And it's all these celebrities putting this makeup on that covers like every flaw you've ever had. And it perfectly matches your skin. They guarantee it. Blah, 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 right? I don't usually fall for this stuff, but like, I'm still a girl. I, I've had bad skin my entire life. I mean, forever. If I even look at the wrong skin products, I break out. So um, I should have known better, but I fell for it anyways. And I bought it. And it's like 14 day free trials. So I thought, oh, it's going to be awesome on me, but at least I get my money back at the top, right? Y'all. I don't even think I made it to the third day. I think I made it two days. I woke up this morning and every inch of my whole side of my face, all around my lip. I mean, I am broken out in places that I haven't broken out since I was like in seventh grade. At 40, almost six years old, you're not supposed to break out like this. So if you guys know, I'm obviously returning this product. I'm not going to give you the name, but if you are on any of these social media sites, You'll see celebrities like swiping it on. It's a perfect match. You'll know which one I'm talking about. It's horrible. And so I looked it up like after the fact, the ingredients. It's needless to say, if you guys have a really good foundation, if you have terrible skin like I do and you have a good foundation that does well for you, doesn't make you break out, leave it in the comments below because I'm always looking for ones to try. I feel like I've been trying my whole life to find really good foundation. <laughs> The other thing is shampoo and conditioner for people with wavy hair that doesn't weigh it down, but leaves it a little wavy. I, you know, that's not a million dollars. Anyways, I'm done with my rant now, you guys. But anyways, I'm going to let this run. We'll be back to show you the next step in a couple hours. Hour and a half. Hour and a half. Oh, I should say. Let me, show. Let me get close to y'all. Look at this. I mean, come on. Ugh. Anyways, if you're going to do this in a bowl... You would do it like you do any traditional bowl. You put your water, your sugar, and your yeast in the bowl till the yeast gets bubbly. You add all your other ingredients, and then you're just going to hand mix it. Let it rise for in the bowl after you mix it for about like 40 minutes. Then you're going to roll it out and do the next steps. Mine, it's, it's close to the same as what I'm talking about. So, anyways, we're seven minutes into this video, and I've absolutely not done anything but put stuff in a bread machine. All right, I'm going to go do some sewing and get a couple other things actually really excited let me show you because i have some over here we um in our etsy shop are releasing a new product ah, i'm so excited about these guys um they released this morning this is not one of them but um we're gonna be making and selling these garden hods and um aren't they cute my husband and i build them together we have a wood shop down in the garage, and they have a, a movable handle. So when you set it down, you push it out of the side, fill it with your veggies. You can rinse it with a hose. All your veggies get clean, and you can carry it in the house. And we offer them. This is a walnut stain, and then we're going to be offering them in, um, like, unfinished. So you guys could get it just with just the wood and then do whatever you want with it. And then this one's my favorite because it actually matches my kitchen cabinets. Um, this is a... Texas Sage from Benjamin Moore, but or Hampshire Gray, I can't remember, but it matches my kitchen cabinets. Isn't that cute? I'm just obsessed with these guys. So um, there'll be a link below to our Etsy shop. You guys get 10% off. Look at all the colors we're going to be offering. Are they not beautiful? Anyways, they also match the birdhouses that we have out in the yard because it's all the same colors that we use for that. It's the same color as our greenhouse. It's the same color as the arch in our garden. I have a problem with like very neutral earthy colors so okay but if you want a garden hod or a I can't remember all the words we're calling them but um trug there's a garden trug a harvest basket they even have little feet we're gonna be making a second version we're working on it maybe this evening we'll see it's gonna be a little bit wider to the side a little bit shorter here but it'll allow the handle to be a little bit taller too so we're gonna have two versions I need names for them though oh and because I like to make everything crazy. Uh, um, we're before Easter. I'm hoping that we get these ones done the next couple of weeks before Easter. We're going to be art, uh, offering a little mini one that will be like an egg basket. So you can use it for picking up eggs out of the garden. 
or I'm thinking for Easter, how cute would they be painted up with your kids, like all dressed for Easter? And my kids are all old, so we're done with that stuff. Um, I think it'd be so cute. Like, anyways, rant number 17 for the day. There's 10 minutes of your life that you won't get back. <laughs> anyways, I will be back in a few minutes and I will show you guys how to make your English muffins after they're done in the bread machine. Thanks. It's time to make some English muffins. So, this, you guys know, is just <laughs> on the floor. It's just flour that I keep in one of these little shakers. I'm going to put some of this on our counter so that our dough doesn't stick. I have a plate right here. I just have some cornmeal. Um, we actually fresh ground popcorn to make our own cornmeal. And, and we made hush puppies with it. It was good. <laughs> so I just have some of that. Um, this is just our dough. I'm going to go ahead and dump it on here. Don't forget to make sure your paddle's not hooked, but we're good. All right. So for our dough, I'm just making sure that I have enough flour that it doesn't stick. And that we can roll it out a little bit. So English muffins are kind of like biscuits. Once you roll it out, you don't want to have to keep rolling it out or it loses its oomph. Um, what I have here are cookie sheets. And I took parchment paper and I cut them into little pieces. So there's six on each cookie sheet. The reason we do that is that if you don't do that, when you're, these are going to rise a second time on your cookie sheets. When you go to flip them into the pan to cook them, they get stretched out and they lose their puff. So this is a trick that we learned. You can pick up each one and flip it. So there's six pieces on each, like I said. I have a rolling pin. <laughs> We're going to roll our dough out to, I don't know, like half an inch thick. You don't want to go too thin. You want nice puffy English muffins. So. I'm just going to flip my dough over one time just to make sure both sides are pretty. And I'm comfortable with that. I don't know how big that is. Maybe 12 by, it's a circle, so it can't be 12 by 12. I got this little set um, of cookie cutters years ago. And you just pick which size you want for your English muffins. So I'm thinking, remember they're going to get taller too. But I'm going to go with that. I don't know how many inches that is, but it's like... <laughs> <laughs> so we're just gonna um that's probably too big actually let me go to one size smaller than that <clears throat> it'd be like a whole loaf of bread yeah that's a little bit better it's just a little bit smaller so um you're just gonna start punching them out we'll see how many we get sometimes i get more than others <clears throat> just depends so i take each one it's like a little thick guy and i'm just gonna put it into our cornmeal on both sides you know, if you get like an English muffin or a crumpet, it has little pieces like that on it. They do that because when it's in the cast iron skillet, it'll actually help it cook up a little bit better. So we're just going to pop that onto our baking sheet. So I'm just going to go all the way around. There's five in our family, so as long as I get more than five, I'm okay. But I was hoping I'd get enough to at least have breakfast for my husband and I tomorrow. So we'll see where we end up. If you go a little bit thinner, you could probably get a little bit more. But all right. I am gonna roll our dough, like I just said, don't do, just to show you if it turns out or not, because I usually I don't get it to turn out, but I kind of push these down a little bit just to make sure that the cornmeal sticks a little bit. So have you ever made biscuits and you had them like just they turn out like hockey pucks? It's most likely because you rolled your dough too much. And um, dough likes to be rolled once and then kind of left alone. So it doesn't usually like to be refolded back up and rolled out again like you can do with cookies. It's a little more particular. But we'll see. Cornmeal's not quite squishing into these like I would like, but as long as it's got a layer, I should show you guys how much it is. Yeah, it's just got a little layer on the outside. It's just enough so that when you cook them, they don't sit flat on the pan on the cast iron. So that's six. Okay, so I got eight in my first roll. I'm going to go back and do it again, which is what I just told you not to do, but I'm hoping it works. 
It never usually does. So it's fine. If it doesn't turn out, they're still edible. They just don't puff up as much. Okay. So there's our eight. But I am going to go take this back. Just kind of do like a quick little knead on it to get it stuck back together. And then I'm going to take my cookie, cookie cutter. No, I'm not. Oh, I should say, by the way, if you don't have one of these, um, you can use a tuna can, which we actually had tuna for lunch today. So um, you can push down with a tuna can, and it basically gets it really darn close to the same circumference. Okay, we're going to try to do a couple more. I'll put a little more cornmeal on my... Um, But yeah, we, we did this cornmeal from popcorn. <laughs> it's raining outside, so my husband so has to exercise. exercise in the house. <laughs> the dogs think it's great. They're going to chase him. <laughs> okay, so there's a couple more. These ones are probably a little thick, but that's okay. All right. I'm an eight. I don't like to waste dough, so we're just going to see if this works. I'm going to be able to get one more. Let's try it. Let's try it. We're a kitchen science place. We like kitchen science. All right. We're going to throw bows in the house. We have all boys, um, so really anything goes in our house. All right, so I got one last one. It's a little... Um, Kind of funky on the outside, but it's edible, like I said. So I can have it for breakfast tomorrow with some um, pear butter or we have a blueberry jelly that we made as well. So I got 11 out of that. And I have very little waste. See? Oh, not bad. So I'm going to put these on the top of our stove. Oh my gosh. All right, guys. I'm hoping this works. <laughs> I have two cast iron skillets. Um, I have them, um, well, I was gonna say on medium heat, that one was getting a little too hot though. Um, I warmed them up just a little bit so that when we put our English muffins in the pans, they are warm. Okay, it's been about 30 minutes, by the way. So, I don't know how many we're gonna be able to get in each one of our pans, but see, so you can lift it up because it's on the little parchment. You're gonna, can you see? If I go to this one, can you see on this one? If I flip it over, it doesn't flatten out because, um, I don't know if I can just slide it. Nope, flip it. <laughs> but they don't lose their oomph. So I'm going to pop these in here. They're seven minutes per side. Maybe I can get all six in one. Let's see. Three. Okay, this one's smoking. Stop smoking. No smoking is bad for your health. That was terrible, sorry. <laughs> Alright, here's our last ones. I'm gonna have one straggler it looks like that I don't quite fit comfortably. Some people cover, I don't Alright guys, it's been seven minutes and I will tell you right now they started to smoke really bad because I forgot to turn the burner down far enough. You really want these at like a medium low heat, otherwise, you're gonna get what I got in one of my pans, which is burn marks. So they're ready to flip over. Um, I will say too, I did go around and I spun them. So what I was on the outside edge, I flipped to the middle halfway through. So I'm just gonna give these a flip. And like I said, this pan definitely got a little more brown. Because, well, it was my fault. This is not how you want them to look. You want them definitely to be a little more golden, which this pan ended up being much, much, much more light. There you go. We want. So watch and eat. Because when it has to sit for that long. Yeah. Whoop. See how beautiful and puffy they are? We're doing good. Did you know that English muffins are basically like pancakes? Who knew, right? <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna set the timer for seven more minutes and then um, they should be fully done. I'll bring you back in seven more minutes. Okay, it's been seven minutes and they are not quite done. Let me show you, I'll show you one of these. This is huge, you guys, this is ridiculous. But the sides, you can still feel they're doughy. So I'm gonna leave them in for another couple minutes until I feel they're a little more cooked. Again, I did go through and give them little turns. They kind of glide on the cornmeal. And all that does is make sure that it, they're not gonna get burned on one side. See how it's like unevenly cooked a little bit on some of these or this side got real burned? Shh, don't say anything, it's fine. 
Um, the other side's gonna be better though, see? But, a few more minutes. All right, it's been like five extra minutes, so. Seven plus five is 12, in case you didn't know. Um, so I just kept doing quarter, little, well, half turns on them um, until they feel like they are cooked through. So I think we're good to go. I'm gonna take them off and put them on a plate. I'm gonna flip you guys down around to the island. All right, y'all, there they are. Do they look like English muffins? They do, right? I mean, I mean, they're a little puffier than an English muffin, but that's my fault for not rolling it very thin. But I'm gonna show you our finished. This one's one of the ones that got a little toasty on one edge when it was too hot, but they have like a, they're nice and puffy. You cut one, can you see it all? If I cut over here. Alright, is the inside of our English muffins. Isn't she pretty? I'm assuming they just smell like English muffins, you guys. But, uh, they're soft like an English muffin. They're basically like a yeasty doughy bread, which is exactly what English muffins are, right? But, I still think it's not interesting. They cook like a pancake. So, our hash browns are ready, so we're gonna go eat dinner. Alexa, stop the timer. Let's see if she stops, she doesn't have the time. But um, we're gonna go eat dinner. Like I said, we are making our English muffins into breakfast sandwiches. We just take a fried up egg. My husband's cooking that sausage tube really thin into little patties, and then we put in some homemade, well, some of us like homemade strawberry jelly, and some of us do not. Yeah. I do. I think the well, littlest one does, and the other ones are like, no, ma. But we got butter for them. So, anyways, thank you for coming along on our crazy little ride, and uh, go make yourself some English muffins. They have all the nooks and crannies. <laughs> 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 I can't help myself. Bye, guys.